It turns out that Excel works really well for solving vector problems. You can make a column for everything in the x direction, everything in the y direction, and statics problems just lend themselves to organizing your information in a table. If you've done Excel before and you're familiar with it, just skim through these slides, read them. If you haven't done Excel before, then go ahead and listen to the narration and know that there's tons of YouTubes out there too that can help you through each of those functions. Um, you can think of Excel as just your calculator. So you're going to click in any of these cells and start with an equal sign and that equal sign will turn it into a calculator and you can type something into Excel just like you would type it into a regular calculator. So you say equals 2 plus 2, enter, and that cell will then be filled with the number 4. You can also calculate things from a table. So here, instead of saying equals 2 plus 2, I'm saying equals B2. So we look at B2. It's grabbing the number out of this cell plus B3. So here's B3 and that'll give you two as well. Notice how everything is color-coded. So B3 is red and this cell is red. B2 is blue. And you can either type in B2 or you can just use your mouse and use a left click on your mouse button to select the cells that you want to use. There are several different functions that you can use with Excel. Sum is one of those functions. So instead of saying B2 plus B3 plus B4 plus, if you want to just add everything in this entire column together, say equals capital SUM parentheses, and then just click and drag your mouse to highlight the cells you want in your sum command, close parentheses, enter, and it will add all of the numbers in this column together. There's a lot of really great help functions that Excel has as well. So let's say I want to figure out the sine of an angle. I'm going to guess that sine is just S-I-N, just like you'd see it on your calculator. So I'll type in equals S-I, and as you start typing in letters for a function, it's going to pop up with all of the possibilities. So here's all of the functions that start with S-I. And then if I grab the function I want and just double click on it, use the left mouse button, double click on sign, it will fill in a template for you. So it will show you what the function is and it'll put where you need to type a number into this. There's a lot of really great YouTube videos out there, just one two minute long that will walk you through each of the functions that's out there. So if anything is frustrating, just go over to YouTube, type in, the more specific the question you type into YouTube, the better the search results will get. So try and be more specific. So not just how to use Excel, but how to use the sign function in Excel. And you'll get a lot of videos to choose from to watch to figure it out. One little warning, Excel defaults to using radians instead of degrees. And so there's a couple different ways to convert between radians and degrees if you want. You can use the radian function. So if you just type in radian parentheses 60, this is going to convert that 60 degrees into radians to get the correct answer. Or you can just type in pi divided by 180. You get pi by capital PI and then empty set of parentheses. That's 3.14159. If I want to go back and get my 60 degrees back out. Here's my arc sine A sine, and I'm reaching up into B3. So I'm grabbing this result. I'm getting my 60 degrees out. Here's an overview of all of the tools that you'll find in the Home tab. And you can just hover your mouse over any of these buttons. And if you just leave it there for a little bit, it'll pop up with a description of what that tool is. So first you have everything to do with your font so you can format, bold, underline, the size of it, the color, highlight it. If you want to add borders on your cell, 
making a nicer table that's right over here. You can have all your alignment and justification tools over here. Your number. So is this a date? Is it, are you talking dollars and cents? Is it scientific notation? The little arrow in the corner over here, you can change all of the different types of numbers it will do. You can change the number of significant figures that will show up in your cell. You can insert columns and rows and delete columns and rows. So a lot of really simple formatting tools up there to walk through. Again, any of the buttons up here in the ribbon where all of your tools are, if you just take your mouse and hover your mouse, just be patient with it, leave it over that button for a few seconds, it will pop up with a description of that tool and what that tool does. And then if this description is not enough for you, just go ahead and click on Tell Me More and it will give you even more instructions for how to use every single little button up here in your tool tab. So the first assignment that you're going to turn into the Dropbox out of Chapter 1 is right down here, Chapter 1 Reference. So you're just going to go into Content, Chapter 1, and then download this Excel file, Chapter 1 Reference. When you download the file, look along the lower border and click on Trig Sheet. And this will pull up some tables that are already set up for you. And all you have to do is click on the green cells and you're going to be filling in equations in the, in the green cells. All the vector analysis that we're going to be doing, and you might remember this from Physics 1, where you take a force and you split that force into X and Y components. So this involves just a lot of triangles and a lot of trig. And if you set these Excel tables up for one scenario, you can set it up so that you can very quickly enter angles and sides and it will calculate everything for you. So whenever you find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over again, it's a lot faster to just set up a quick table that has all of the equations and calculations for you in there so you don't have to do any repetitive monotonous things. And this is one of the calculations that you'll be doing over and over and over again. So how I have it set up is everything that is highlighted yellow, this is what you'll be typing numbers into, and green cells will calculate kind of the rest of that triangle for you. Each of the tables in your Excel homework starts out with an example table. So look at the example table and what you're going to do is click on the green cells that have equations in them. So for instance, this table is calculating the sides and angles of a right triangle. So here's a right triangle. We have sides A, B, and C with angles A, B, and C. And let's say we know two of those sides. We know side A and side B but we don't know the third side. We don't know that hypotenuse over here. So what we're going to do is just use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And here we have sqrt. That takes the square root of a squared. That's in cell c19. So this is a squared over here. And then cell c20, that's the cell that has b. So a squared plus b squared and it calculates the length of side C. And then once we have the lengths of all the sides of the triangles, we can go ahead and calculate the angles. Remember that Excel uses radians instead of degrees, so we're gonna have to convert back to degrees if that's what you're more comfortable with. Here's our arc sine, and remember SOHCAHTOA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I want angle A, we're looking at here, angle A, that's going to be the arc sine of this opposite side, A, divided by C. So we have arc sine C19, that's A, divided by C21, that's our hypotenuse. So that gives us that angle at the top over here. And then very similar thing for B. So just look through the example table and see what equations they're using. And then you're going to go to a different scenario. So let's say instead of knowing side A and B, instead we know side A and C. 
and we have to, from this, figure out what B is. You can still use the Pythagorean theorem. You just have to switch it around a little bit. So see if you can add the needed equations to figure out the length of side B and the angles A and B off of this new one. And then once you have your tables filled in, there's one more step. And that is you're going to take the numbers in these yellow cells and just change that number around a little bit. So instead of 12, I have 3. Instead of 20, I have 5. And if you change those numbers, your equations will calculate the new side and angles for this new triangle. So maybe it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle instead of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So if you set it up correctly, you can change everything in the yellow cells and it will calculate everything in the green cells for you. And again, these are calculations that you're going to be doing over and over and over again in this class. So if you create a little Excel template for yourself, this will really speed up all of your homework problems. You can calculate things very quickly in here. Once you've finished filling out everything down here in the trig sheet, go ahead and look at the unit conversion sheet. That worksheet's already done for you. And then come over here to homework number 1A. And this has the same problems that are in one of the first D2L quizzes. So you'll be able to answer the problems here and then try out a D2L quiz with your answer. Again, the yellow cells here are where you're going to be typing equations in. And each one of these, I have little tips and hints of how to type things in. So for instance, Excel has a really nice unit conversion function. You just say convert. Let's say I want to go from meters to miles. I just type in equals convert. This cell, quotation marks meters, comma, quotation marks mi. And it will convert it for you. And that is a really handy little thing to use, too. So these are a couple of equations. Some of these have some, some different units to play around with. And we will be doing half of our homework in metric and half in English. So remind yourself about how to do all of those different unit conversions in here. Once you are finished filling in everything in your Excel sheet, you can use the Excel sheet to complete both the chapter one quiz, and this is going to have those unit conversion problems in it, and your trig review quiz. And the trig review quiz is going to be off of that third worksheet you filled out. So just click on each of these. This is under content chapter one again, or you can get to the same quizzes under assessment and quiz. So try out a D2L quiz. These guys are unlimited tries, and it'll just help you get used to the D2L quiz format too. The last step, once you have everything in Excel filled out, come over here to Assessments, Dropbox, and look for the Chapter 1 Reference Excel Sheet. Just click on it, and you can download the Excel sheet that you have filled out in here. This is linked to the gradebook. So after I get it graded, you can click on Grades, and your grade will show up in both the Dropbox and in the gradebook. So this has been just a very basic introduction to Excel with some of the most used functions in it. We'll be graphing some things out in Excel in the future, maybe even doing some numerical solutions if you want to tackle the Chapter 2 challenge problem. But take it just a step at a time, and hopefully it won't be too frustrating for you. If it is, just give me a call on the phone, and I can walk you through some of this stuff if you need it. But no, this is not just for this class. You'll be seeing Excel in a lot of the different engineering classes you're taking. So try and tackle it now, get used to it now, and we'll see you later.